بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد we are fortunate that we have been endowed with this ni'ma of deen which is a means of guidance for humanity in all aspects of life part of that is preparing adequately and we see from the incident of yusuf alayhi salatu was salam when the king seen the dream waqal al malik inni ara sab'a baqarat that he had seen the dream of seven fat cows whom seven lean ones were devouring and seven green ears of corn and others which were dry seven so he asked his people that tell me the interpretation of the dream they didn't know so then yusuf alayhi salam was summoned and uh, asked for the dream aftina fi sabi baqarat so yusuf alayhi salam interpreted the dream and he said for seven consecutive years you shall sow as usual means you will receive the usual amount of rain and fertility for seven consecutive years then for the second series of what does occur to occur harvest which you reap and leave that in its ears except a little bit of which you may eat thumma ya'ti min ba'di dhalika sab'un shidad after that seven hard years will come so he was advising the king and interpreting the dream but he gave a strategy of preparation and how to improvise based on the forecast of what is going to occur so he said whatever you have is during so seven fertile years leave it in the ears why you want to preserve it so this will help the harvest to stay longer except whatever you need take that out remove it which should be sig- not significant not substantial and stay away from being extravagant So when the seven years of drought will follow after these fertile years then you will be adequately prepared even whatever you're going to try to plant whatever you're trying to produce there will be no harvest etc so you've got seven years of capital capitalization in another seven years which you have done in preparation So the king followed the instructions and everybody benefited. But it was part of the strategy. So in our deen we strategize, in our dunya we strategize. And amongst the most important hidayat is the hidayat of Quran and Hadith what Allah and his Rasul have instructed us. That's our survival guide for dunya and akhirah. those people who follow instructions will have the least regrets but those who do not follow instructions will have regrets so we need to go to ulama we need to make mashwara we need to eat istikhara we need to uh, increase in our ilm and knowledge and the mizaj of sami'na wa ata'na to hear to listen and to comply immediately otherwise not complying may make us tired as we did the story of Musa alayhi salam so following instructions they say there was a woman who was very overweight she was obese so she went to a doctor and she wanted a diet so the doctor did the normal tests and then advised them i want you to eat regularly for two days then skip a day and repeat the procedure for two weeks The next time I see you would have lost at least 5 kilos. But it so happened that the woman returned two weeks later and she had lost 20 kilos. So the doctor was baffled, amazed and asked, did you follow my instructions? So she replied, yes, 100%. But I thought I was going to drop dead the third day. So the doctor asked from hunger you mean should be like no no from skipping he said skip a day 
of eating. She understood skip a day, means in skipping. So when we don't follow instructions, we will tie ourselves unnecessarily. So planning adequately, as the saying goes in Arabic, لا أقل كالتدبير There's no intelligence, as good planning. لا فقر ما حسن تدبير No poverty will come with good management planning skills. آفة المعاش سوء التدبير The scourge of life of loving is poor management, poor, poor planning. سبب التدمير سوء التدبير Poor organization is a cause and a means of destruction. So discussing the chapter of, of seclusion, going off the grid, staying in the mountains, it's not as simple as said. One is logistic wise, one is practicality wise, and one is the Shari Masail with regards to that. So Dean does not encourage us to do things in Josh, be spontaneous to be in a rush, but in Hosh, proper planning, proper mashwara, proper istikhara, proper consultation with the ulama. And if we consult ulama, they will identify one important aspect, and that is hijrat, migration in deen, is for deen. So it will be justified when it is for deen and not dunya. And the solitude which the fuqaha talk about not necessarily means relocating only, but one can do that in the precincts of their home, etc. So, as you will go through in detail, it will depend on the time, on the place, on the situation, etc. And that's why the riwayat of Amir al Mu'minin Umar, عن, the first hadith of Bukhari, which we've heard, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ So your, your amal are based on your intentions, your motives. وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِمْ مَا نَوَى And you will get what you intended for. Now it is highlighting what our priority should be. فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ So option A, which is your priority and prerogative, is only for Deen Hijrat. وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُسِيبُهَا You want to acquire wealth, acquire dunya, preserve your dunya. أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِهُهَا Or for a certain female that you want to marry. فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِ Then your migration is based on what you migrated for. But that's not a priority, that's not an objective, that's not a bunya, that's not a foundation. So some scholars said, that between solitude and interaction بِشَرْتِ مَعْرِفَ مَا يَتَأَيَّنَ That a person must see where there is greater preservation. Imam Nawi has mentioned المُخْتَارِ تَفْضِيلُ الْمُخَالَةَ لِمَنْ لَا يَغْرِبَ عَلَى ذَنِّهِ أَنَّهُ يَكَعْ فِي مَعْسِيَ That you will continue associating and interacting with people as long as you're sure you will not fall into haram. But when there is fear, then solitude is better for a person. Other ulama have said, يَخْتَلِفْ بِإِخْتِلَافِ الْأَشْخَاسِ It depends uh, according to the person, then you will look if that is equal, then بِإِخْتِلَافِ الْأَحْوَالِ What's the situation? بِإِخْتِلَافِ الْأَوْقَادِ Then you will look at the time, the place, the circumstance. So based on that, will we make a decision? So when your deen is in jeopardy, what the fuqa is saying? When your deen is in jeopardy, so priority is deen. Alama Hafiz ibn Hajar Askalani in Fatul Bari has mentioned that والخبر دال على فضيلة العزلة لمن خاف على دينه. Only when there is fear of your deen and the risk of your deen being destroyed, then you will opt for seclusion. علماء سندي in the حاشا of نسي has mentioned أنه يجوز العزلة بل هي أفضل أيام الفتن. That it is permissible to choose solitude 
actually it is more virtuous when there is a fitan and there is an era where your deen will be disrupted these are the words of the scholars when there is a, a fear of your deen and there is a fitness but when there is no fitness and uh, thus the, the jumhur, the, the, the consensus of uh, the ulama is that a person should associate with people he should not remain aloof and they've given a few dalail so even if a person has to go aloof there are preconditions if you decide you want to go aloof you want to go off the grid you want to go in solitude it comes with conditions and going off of of the system of the grid will be where you are fearing your deen or where you can set up a structure where you can preserve your deen and uh, amongst the dalai ulama have given is one is if you look at the lives of nabi alayhi salatu wasalam in anbiya and sahaba then they opted for that secondly the riwayat of tirmizi al mu'min alladhi yukhalitu an-nas wa yasbiru ala adhahum that you associate with people and they give you taklif and hardships you are inviting to Allah you make it effort on deen and you go through the difficulties a'adham ajram min al mu'min alladhi la yukhalitu an-nas wa la yasbiru ala adhahum is more virtuous is more meritorious then a believer that does not mix with people and does and is not patient on their difficulties. When this hadith al Sindi in the Hash of the Maja is mentioned, that al uh, hadith yadulu anan al mukhalit al sabir khairum min al mu'tazil. That a person who mixes with people and is patient is better than a person who decides to remain aloof. Alama San'ani in Subul Salam is mentioned that this virtue of associating, mixing with people, doing da'wah, mixing with the with environments where you can sit with the ulama, etc. So, so the benefit is that there will be Amr bil Maruf and joining good, there will be forbidden evil where you can perfect your deen. And in effort to perfect your deen, there is more virtue. Likewise, the, another riwayat in Tirmizi, where a, a sabi passed by a ravine, a, 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 a luscious scene, a, a spring, where he seen the water and he seen the scenery and he seen the beauty. And he said, wow, this is quite amazing. So he was amazed by, by the scenery, the water, etc. And he thought so that Law nas to fiha the shab. That uh, why don't I move here and start residing here? But he thought that I cannot do this without mashwara. So that's very important. Any step that we are making, mashwara, istikhara, etc., is important. So he went to Nabi alayhi salam and asked his mashwara. So the Nabi of Allah replied, La taf'al fa inna maqam ahadikum fi sabilillah. Don't consider that at all. Abandon the thought because your place in the path of Allah, a little while in the path of Allah, afdalu min salatihi fi baytihi sab'ina ama is more virtuous than him reading Salah in his house for 70 years. أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Do you not wish that Allah will forgive you? Allah will enter you into Jannah. Strive in the path of Allah. Strive in the path of Allah. مَنْ قَاتَلَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَوَقَنَاقَ وَجَبَتْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Striving in the path of Allah. Even the duration of two mulkins of a camel that makes Jannah wajib on that person. So it seemed appropriate, it seemed that he was a Sabi, but the Targhib from the Nabi of Allah was not that. Then the, the next Dalil and proof I have given is 
where Ibn Hajar has mentioned in his Fatul al-Bari that a person will establish a lot of faculties of deen and the shair of deen he will establish an environment where a group of be believers will in, in the ijtima'iyat where you, you are united they can open many chapters of, of goodness and they can help each other and amongst the important requisites is shuhud al jumaa wal jama'a that part of establishing salat with jama'a which is a priority in deen establishing jumaa going and assisting for the janaza visiting the sick the gatherings of dhikr and many other departments of deen will be revived so it is important that a person should not just spontaneously abandon people and go in solitude and under this ayah the ulama have explained إذ أول فتت إلى الكهف that the story of the kahf the youngsters uh, that went and uh, wanted to preserve their deen ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا that firstly they made dua for the goodness of their deen so Alama Qurtubi has mentioned this ayat clearly indicates that migration for one's deen is an important ingredient and fear of fitna this is a dalil like how Nabi salam and Saba made hijrat from Mecca to Medina for preservation of deen and likewise Allama ibn Kathir has also mentioned that عند وقوء الفتن في الناس that when there is fear of, 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 of trials and tribulations and compromise on your deen أي يفير العبد منهم خوفا على دينه that a person to preserve his deen must go to places where he will secure his akhira and then he quoted the riwayat يشكو أي يكون خيرا ما للرجل غنم there will time a time come with the best property of a property of a man will be his sheep which will graze on the tops of mountains and the places where the rain falls, the pastures, etc. etc. Escaping the the fit and the trials and the afflictions we may come. So Ibn Kathir explains that besides this objective, one does not have permission to leave the uh, jama'ah, to leave the, the precincts and the mahal of deen. Alama Khattabi is also mentioned and we quoted Abu Sulaiman إِنَّمَا تَنْفَعُ الْعُلَمَاءَ الْأُقَلَاء that those people who are justified to leave and these are amongst the conditions that if a person is an alim, is a scholar and he knows the masail and he has enough ilm to keep him going with regards to his deen, then permission is given. Otherwise, we here min abari shay al juhal. But a person who does not have the knowledge of deen, then this is most harmful. This is most harmful. And uh, he narrates the call of one of the scholars, tafaqqa thumma tazal. First learn deen, then choose solitude based on these conditions. And uh, that's why it's very important that uh, the scholars have said, when asked, ما تقولوا في عزلة الجاهل when, when an ignorant person decides he wants to go into the mountains, he wants to go into solitude, but he's not learned deen, he's not spending enough time, sahbat in the ulama, mashayikh, and even though there is a justification, then the scholars have replied, Khabal wa wabal. This is a great destruction. We are thinking it's our preservation, but it's great destruction. So again, priority of the ta'alim of deen. Ibn Qudama is also mentioned that uh, with regards to learning the fara'id and learning deen, that is a great uh, ibadah and it is a great priority. 
so when a person has uh, learned teen then it will be beneficial otherwise before that ghayatul khusran it will be the climax of regret and remorse so the scholars have, have, have clearly identified and in summary our priority should be to preserve deen and that's why in the hadith Nabi Ali Salam explained inna sa'id liman junnib al fitan a very fortunate person is a person who stays far away from the fitnas inna sa'id liman junnib al fitna he repeated again and again and again and man ibduliya fa sabara fa waha and a person who has been tested and he remains patient how wonderful and how fortunate is a person who abstains from temptations so as a priority we need to see how we can preserve our deen may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin